In 2016 and 2017, when I attended accident and emergency during a chest episode, my ECGs sometimes contained the word infarct. It said I had anterior or interior infarct. Now I know a heart attack is called a myocardial infarct, and these are not the term for a heart attack. That does not my ECG is normal, if I have some other kind of infarct. Machines only make mistakes when the human that programmed them makes mistakes. Machines do not get personal with you. They do not lie, cheat, or discriminate against some people. If the ECG machine tells lies about you, it probably tells lies about all the patients. You can safely assume medical machines in a hospital will be 50% accurate, maybe 99%. Also, if the ECG contains all sorts of technical comments, chances are, these are abnormalities. Google can clarify to the extent as your GP whether these are abnormalities. Ultimately, your reading skills, and not Google itself, will hinder you from finding the truth. If you want to just believe your doctor, in my opinion, this will work for most people. The secret to successfully reading an unknown subject is to not assume you can understand every word. It is not important to understand every word. This chap in Charing Cross Hospital said he was terrified of Google, which could give him false information. Google will not give misleading information about your illness. This includes information that is displayed without clicking a website. Naturally, Google cannot tell you what illness you have. The Internet is regulated and censored. The Internet is not like a decentralized blockchain. The truths available on the web are the ones the law enforcement and political philosophies allow you to have. We do not have a free society. Flow of information is 100% police. The websites of a particular subject with a high Alexa ranking come out on top in Internet searches. Licensed and government-approved websites like the NHS come out on top in ranking. The health information that displays without clicking a single link is gleaned from the top-ranking websites, like the NHS. There would be very little NHS would want to mislead the public about. While you can pay money to rise to the top in an internet search, the governments dominate the internet. The man on the street can pay his way to increase his Alexa rank. But he will not be able to complete with government-approved websites. That is my opinion. All the main search engines would provide accurate information on matters such as medical terms. You can also visually see abnormalities in some cases. Your graph is not a sine wave. But it is a more or less regular pattern repeating itself. When the graph pattern jumps and goes wild and crazy, the baseline is not a straight horizontal line, you know your ECG is not normal. How do you know if these problems are serious or fatal? I feel patient, there is no way to know for sure. This is if you do not trust your doctor and they made it impossible to get a second opinion. That is what happened to me. Most others will trust their doctor or at least be able to get a second opinion. Still, I am suggesting what I did, which you can also do. As I said, you could have a heart problem, including a severe one, and the ECG can come out normal. If they measure your ECG during a chest episode, your heart pounding and squeezing, it would be a gross lie that your ECG was normal. But you won't have an episode 24 into 7 into 365. If you were having an episode, it might show abnormalities, and these are real and can indicate what you have. I have an abnormality that shows all the time. This also means you have an illness. I always have T-wave abnormalities. The T-waves that are supposed to be inverted are erect. If the doctor wants to bother you, he or she can jolly well tell you what you have the fuck wrong with you. By looking at T-waves they can tell if your electrolytes are screwed up. I have high calcium in the blood due to parathyroids. All they ever say even when those patterns go wild and crazy is everything is normal. As the years have rolled by, doctors at large, rather than one single individual, and in multiple cities, have been lying about my ECGs, as detailed above and my physical condition has been deteriorating very slowly. Based on the lies, I am persistently told, I am no longer able to trust anything that comes from the mouth of a doctor. The phrase I hate to hear is, everything here is very reassuring. No, it is not reassuring. I have severe symptoms for a long time, and doctors keep on saying things are reassuring. If doctors do not find anything wrong with you, you are not going to get treatment. You know your problem is chronic and your future is doomed. 
So is it possible I am chronically ill, but always test results are lovely, positive, and reassuring? This medical journey is what I want to share. One of my friends, Regent, died of psychiatric medication eight years ago. His ECG had elongated QT waves. My QT waves are around 330 milliseconds. When I took an overdose, my waves were around 470 milliseconds. Regent who died in 2014, routinely had elongated QT waves of 440 milliseconds. Elongated QT waves are a heart condition that can result from psychiatric medication, it leads to death. Some people have atrial fibrillation. This also is something showing up on the ECG, and I think they will faint and fall. I have never been seen with AF. At least, doctors haven't told me I have it. But I blacked out on the road and fell to the ground, my head was bleeding a lot as my head hit a stone. They said at moderate accident and emergency, they are doing a scan of my head after which they said everything was normal, and reassuring, and to go home. They did not bother to explain to me why I had the blackout. In case they did not know, they did acknowledge I had a problem. As doctors, they would know to want various reasons can cause blackouts. As far as their head scan goes, I feel one of the two below could be true. 1. My blackout was caused by an ailment that cannot be detected through CT scans, and they did not bother to diagnose it step by step. 2. The head scan is error-prone and had a reliable way to check for causes of blackouts. I had fallen several feet away from where I stood, and so I must have walked backward before my blackout, without realizing it. In addition, I have sleepwalked at 1 a.m. near large bodies of water, not realizing where I was going, and all I could remember when waking up was an intercity bus going around me in circles. Clearly, a hallucination. I woke up in the hospital and momentarily saw the furniture upside down from above. Just for a second. All these things happened in different years, and no doctor is interested. A doctor cannot estimate a patient's education level, etc. They do not have a clue what lies you can be told convincingly. Even educated people might fall for certain lies, by doctors. It's the same with psychiatrists, they have zero ability to challenge a person who is lying. I'm sorry about these opinions in the last three or four sentences. They are just my opinions. I could be completely wrong. My apologies. So when I was having this cardiac episode and going in the ambulance, the paramedics would cover the ECG with their hand and say it is normal. Once the paramedic hand who handed me to the nurse and told her in front of me the ECG is abnormal as usual, but we tell her it was normal. And he. I think you've caught on by now. You see, once I would be in the hospital, they would keep me for several hours. During certain visits, they gave me a saline drip to make me feel better. I was feeling extremely exhausted. They told me at the hospital they believe I am a patient and urgently need a colonoscopy, I had a problem with fasting, and I needed to not eat or drink for several hours. I'd explained that to the head doctor in the surgery, Dr. S., and he had told the nurse who was going to take me to the colonoscopy that I was a schizo head and to treat me accordingly. Not to entertain my attitude that I couldn't fast. Here we have a person who is mentally ill and therefore hallucinates that they are difficulty fasting. Most people in the 21st century would argue that anything a doctor says has got to be true. My only objection is that mentally ill people are also liable to have physical illnesses. I could have a genuine physical illness that makes it difficult to fast. I feel very dizzy and I feel it's about to pass out. There is no reason to be sure just because he's correct that someone is mentally ill that they will not have a medical condition that they describe. The fact he says so that he sure shows his lying. Anyhow that colonoscopy didn't take place even though it was supposed to be an emergency test. I was only trying to cooperate and tell them of my difficulty. There was no need to manhandle me. That's not going to help me get better physically or mentally if I'm crazy. Not only that, but I had to ask for the exit and the nurse enter directing me into a locked car park. Eventually, someone else helped me and took me to the proper exit. So it was set up again later that year, and it was cancelled again, because I couldn't fast. During the months of 2016, when I went to accident and emergency, there were different doctors on different occasions. Each one of them lied that my heart was normal.